In this video, we're going to revisit piecewise functions. Now that we know a little bit about quadratic functions and square root functions, we can have some more interesting graphs. We're going to start by practicing how we graph a piecewise function. By graphing the function f of x equals, and then a curly left brace with two lines. The first line has the square root of x minus 1 under the square root, plus 2 off to the side, and this is true if x is greater than or equal to 1. The second line has negative x plus 3, and this is true if x is less than 1. Now what we need to do to graph this piecewise function is consider it as really two functions to graph. y equals the square root of x minus 1 plus 2 to the side, and y equals negative x plus 3. Once we have those graphed, we can put in the domain restrictions to see what this function looks like. Let's jump over to Desmos. The first function I graphed here is y equals the square root of x minus 1 and then plus 2 off to the side. This is a square root graph. It has an end point at 1 comma 2 and it passes through points like 2 comma 3 and 5 comma 4. Then we'll add the function y equals negative x plus 3. This is a decreasing straight line with a y-intercept at 0, 3 and an x-intercept of 3, 0, so it's a line that's at a perfect diagonal. Now clearly, if we were to graph what I see on the screen right now, it would not be a function because it does not pass the vertical line test from x equals 1 going to the right. But I haven't restricted the domain yet, so let me do that. I'm going to start with y equals the square root of x minus 1 plus 2. I'm only using this one when x is greater than or equal to 1. And that actually has no effect on this graph at all because the last value I could use is the endpoint, which is at 1, 2. For the other function, the linear function, I want to restrict it to x is less than 1. And when I do that, I have a linear function that decreases into that exact same point as the endpoint of the square root function, which is 1, 2. You can verify that by running your pen along this line all the way to its end, which is technically 1 comma undefined because it's an open hole, but that's also uh, just, you can see as you move it along, it's just about 2, which is the end point of the other graph. Let's go ahead and graph this on our other page. Remember that if you'd like a table of values, say, for that square root graph, you can go into settings and then ask for a table of values about that square root graph. You're going to certainly have some values in there that are undefined, but we'll also get some values that are defined, like 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 3. I'm graphing 1 comma 2, 2 comma 3, and 5 comma 4, which are all on that square root graph. That one goes to the right. Then I'm going to use the ruler to graph this perfect diagonal that's coming down into that 1 comma 2 value. And now I have a sketch of the piecewise function. It passes a vertical line test, so all is well. Now I'd like you to find a formula for the piecewise function that's graphed below. I'm going to start by describing the two graphs. They're both clearly pieces of parabolas. The first parabola opens up. It has a point at negative 5, 5. It has another point at negative 4, 2. The vertex is at negative 3, 1 another point at negative 2 comma 2, and it goes up to an open point at negative 1 comma 5, but it doesn't reach that point. We'll call that q1 for quadratic 1. This other parabola piece is opening down, and it looks like we might just have half of it or a part of it. I'm going to put these points in a different color to make it a little bit easier for those of you who can see this. The first point is at negative 1 comma 3. We have another point that uh, looks pretty nice at 1, 2, another one at 3, negative 1, and maybe 5, negative 6. Let's call that one q2 for quadratic 2. All right, so you guys go ahead and find me a formula for this piecewise function given that data that I've given to you. Pause the video and come back when you're finished. All right, we're back. Hopefully you remembered that if you want to find a formula for a piecewise function, you should treat each piece separately. One thing we can do is make a table of values for the points we know, and then find a regression equation for the parabola. Let's put those points over into a table in Desmos. For Q1, the first quadratic, I have an xy table, and in that, in pairs, I have negative 5, 5, negative 4, 2, negative 3, 1, and negative 2, 2. I can find a regression for that, and since I know that the vertex is at negative 3, 1, 
I can make that regression model to be forced through that vertex. My regression model is going to be y sub 1 tilde, to get our estimation, a times parentheses x sub 1 plus 3, close the parentheses, square it, plus 1. The 3 and the 1 come from the vertex. The a value is really the only thing we don't know, and we get a very nice model that goes through the points with an a value of 1. Let's write that down. q1 is y equals 1 times x plus 3. 3, the quantity squared, plus 1. Now let's find a formula for Q2. I don't know for sure what the vertex of Q2 is, so I'm going to use the standard form to find the regression. I have another table with x2 and y2 as my header row, and going line by line, I have negative 1, 3, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, and 4, negative 6. My regression model is going to be y sub 2 tilde a x sub 2 squared plus b x sub 2 plus c. Don't forget that the x's and y's need to have the same subscripts as the table you're using. And every x in your model needs to have that subscript or you'll get an error. When I calculate this regression, I get a equals negative 0.25, b equals negative 0.5, and c equals 2.75. Let's go ahead and write that down. Q2 is y equals negative 0.25x squared minus 0.5x plus 2.75. Now I just need the domain on which to use each of these. Q1 gets used from negative infinity all the way up to negative 1, but not including negative 1. That is, x is less than negative 1. Q2 is used from 1 going all the way to infinity on the x-axis, and we can include the endpoint. So the domain for q2 is x is greater than or equal to negative 1. We can check that over in Desmos by adding the restrictions. I'm going to turn off my points and my regression models, and just jump back to the function with its restriction. So y equals 1 times x plus 3, the quantity squared, plus 1. Left brace, x is less than negative 1, right brace. You see that did restrict the domain in the proper way, and we can even add the endpoint negative 1, 5 as an open circle. Let's add that second function, y equals negative 0.25x squared minus 0.5x plus 2.75, left brace, x is greater than negative 1, right brace. And when I add that uc, we also have the exact function we needed. Let's now write the final formula for this piecewise function, and the actual function was g of x. g of x equals left curly brace with enough room for two lines. The top line, remember we don't write the y equals anymore because we have g of x equals in front. That means we have parentheses x plus 3, the quantity squared, plus 1. We use that if x is less than negative 1. For the second line, negative 0.25 x squared minus 0.5 x plus 2.75. And we use that if x is greater than or equal to negative 1. Just to recap, don't be afraid of piecewise functions. They're simply a function made from several pieces. If you take each of those pieces one by one and figure out what their domains are, you'll have the piecewise function, whether you're graphing it or finding it.